Julie Irving and Courtney's with me and we're going to talk today about something a little bit different. This is going to be a show and tell and I'm going to show you some different examples from my recent buying trip to England. Now most of these um, are available or were, are soon to be available on my um, website on Ruby Lane and that's Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels. Check them out. What you're looking at here and, and something that's very popular is buckle jewelry. And buckle jewelry has been around since the Victorian times. And what you're looking at here is a couple different examples. Um, let's see, this one is actually hallmarked. And when I say that, I mean that in the inside of the bracelet, there's all kinds of little pictures. And if you go um, on the internet and just Google British hallmarks in jewelry, you'll see, you'll get um, a feeling of what some of these are. This one is, it told me everything I wanted to know about this bracelet because it told me it was made in Birmingham, England. It was during the reign of Queen Victoria. Um, it's sterling silver and it is from 1850. And I could tell all of that from the marks on the inside. Now that's an example of a true Victorian. On the other side, you have one that is a more recent version and it is done in an aluminum silver. So obviously various price ranges, um, but here's a couple of examples. And then you can see on the bottom um, here is a display of a couple of the buckle rings, which I love the look of those. And you'll see some more of these on my website because I do this trip annually and I always get buckle jewelry because I really, really like it. I like the look of it and customers like it too. Um, so these are just a couple of the little buckle rings and these are any, anything from like the Victorian times to about 186, uh, 1960s, um, that range. Uh, that's where most of this comes from. What you see on this tray is examples of check and I have another a YouTube video that goes a little bit more into detail about Czech jewelry because uh, last fall I was able to go there and so I did a video just after that. Um, but these are the, if you remember from that or if you haven't seen it you should go back and take a look but a lot of the Czech jewelry was exported to Japan, the US and Europe. And so it's really in the U.S. and Europe that you can find the best Czech, way, way better Czech jewelry than is in Czech. Um, and here are some examples. These are just some really, I don't buy, there's a lot of beads out there, but I don't buy them unless there's something very unique about it, it whether it's the shape of the stone or the ornateness and unusualness of the caps, they call these, that go over them. This one is really unique. This is a buckle and it's all done in enamel as is this littler pin and then um, this one's on my website. I just put this up a little while ago and as, as this is as well. This was probably one of my very best favorite finds. This is authentic Max Nager check jewelry um, and I talk a little bit about Max and Norbert Nager in the other video but to find this in this color in this kind of condition was a, was a real find. What you're looking at here is costume jewelry some of it vintage some of it current but this is called this is a, a manufacturer from England called Butler and Wilson and here some of this is vintage like I said this flag is vintage this is a huge spider, one of his really iconic pieces um, that I found in England. And then this is vintage. I thought that that was very fun. Um, a man kind of waving this long flag of rhinestones. And the Perot in the moon is also vintage. Now, this year, for the first time since I went to England, and I've been there many, many times because I even used to go there for work. The company that I work with had um, offices in London, so I got there quite frequently. But I had never been to the Butler and Wilson store. And so this year I went there, 
and this piece would be new. There isn't. There is a vintage version of it, but this is a newer piece. And then also, they're doing rings now. And I want to show you that because I just love the design of that. And that was one I would keep for myself just because it's so much fun. So take a look at uh, Butler and Wilson. Butler and Wilson, um, several pieces are on my Ruby Lane Chapel Hill Vintage Jewels website. Take a look. I wanted to just show you how you wear this brooch, gigantic, but it just kind of goes over your shoulder. Um, one of the things that I like about Butler and Wilson is it's just, it's very well done, but it's also very fun, whimsical jewelry. Another one of my very favorite finds from England. This came from the big international show at Newark. Um, I don't know how many vendors there are there. It's got to be thousands. But this is a piece of Egyptian revival jewelry. And it became very, it's, it's a very unique um, necklace. Not, certainly not a style for everyone, but if you like Egyptian revival types of things, this, this one is a pretty spectacular piece. Um, very Art Nouveau down in style. Um, made of brass. Um, cabochon, glass stones, and then it's got a couple of charms that are hanging from it, but you can see the designs in it. It's, it's um, very Egyptian revival in style. What you're looking at on this tray is fine jewelry. Um, most of this is gold, and when you're when you're buying um, gold pieces in, in England, some of it's marked and some of it's not. Some of the earlier pieces aren't marked, but for the most part they are. But the difference is, is that you're going to see 9K, 15K, 18K, and 22. And often you'll see those in numbers. 9 carat is equal to 375, for example. Again, as I said before, um, websites on British Hallmarks will tell you all of this. And when I go, I even print out a couple of cheat sheets so I have them with me in case I need to refer to them, in case I don't remember. But these are little um, gold knot pierced earrings. And then I bought quite a few of the drop earrings. I have, I have more of them in that are not gold. Um, but these are all these are Edwardian, these are uh, Victorian Edwardian time frame. Some of the stones in these, like these are amethyst, and these are all pocket watch fobs. People use them as pendants or they put them on charm bracelets. Some of them have a swivel to them where they have a different stone on each side. These two are silver, but these two are gold. And then this is an uh, amber, amber stone in also in a gold setting. Again, this is an amethyst drop. And, and we've talked before about the types of hooks on the back of a, of a pendant or a um, brooch. And often it's just a very plain C curve without any latch attachment. And that's how you can tell some of the age. So that's just been a sampling of some of the things. We talked about Czech, Butler and Wilson on the costume side of things. A little bit about um, Egyptian revival and then uh, the fine gold and the buckle jewelry. So go ahead and take a look at uh, my website. Lots more examples for you to look at. Um, but I just wanted to show you a few of my favorite things. Thanks for joining. Okay.